You are live. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> Thank you, anybody who's watching us on Facebook or on YouTube. I'm Jordan Toronto, <laughs> and this is uh, Discover Me TV's first ever live stream. And I have on um, for my live stream interview, Sia Arving Arvinger. I said it wrong, sorry. Sia Arvinger. Yay! <laughs> I wish you were here. Hello. You're a little frozen to me for a moment, but hopefully you'll Start moving again. There, your, there's your smile. Hi, Sia. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Um, so yeah, so we got to know each other because um, Matt, my husband is directing Sia in some virtual versions of musicals that you're doing both the ones, uh, both the, the yeah. ones he's directing, right? Free the Fish and dream at the end of time, yeah. is that right? Yes. So they're gonna be coming out as part so, of the Hollywood Fringe Festival um, later this month? Yeah, I believe the fish is coming out ninth, and I believe dream at the end of time is maybe the 12th. Okay, cool. Well, we'll double check and make sure we put anything on the comments to uh, let people know when those are coming up and you can watch her in both of those. Um, tell me how you got started in musicals. Like, how did you start performing? I've been performing, both of my parents were musical theater people as well. My mom um, performed in Disney Tokyo when she was, a dancer and my dad like also the musicals. And so since they were both local people, when they found out that I was also interested in singing as a kid, I was just like sing and create shows and stuff. They were like, we should put her into some performing school. Yes. <laughs> and so I've just always been to performing arts schools when I was a kid. I've never been to like a regular school that just offered like sports and stuff. <laughs> and that's then awesome. that's just always something that I've wanted to do. I have like, hobbies, but that's music's always been something that's been like a constant in my life. And so I just decided to pursue it as a career. And I went to college at AMDA. I got my degree and I'm just doing. <laughs> just, you're doing it. And wait, tell me one of your most favorite, uh, <laughs> you just did um, a recent production, or I don't know how recent, but uh, when you could actually be live on stage. Um, did you have a favorite um, like professional production that you did after graduating? Um, yeah. Well, I only got the chance to do like one professional <laughs> show yeah, know, right. graduation, yeah, and I did. Oh, wait, I lost what? You. Wait, 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 I lost you for one moment. Wait, just tell me that one more time what you just said. <laughs> I only got the chance to do, I graduated and then I auditioned for Kinky Boots with 3D Theatricals. And then after that, the last show for that was in March. And then after that, all of like the pandemic stuff started happening. Right. So that was like the only professional show I got to do right out of school. <laughs> was Kinky Boots so fun to do? It was amazing, especially my very first show outside of school, outside of college, meeting people that I have never met before, being a part of this company that I've never known existed until I left college or until I graduated. Um, <laughs> it was amazing. Everyone was very nice. Um, TJ Dawson was amazing, great man. The musical director, Bennett, everyone in the cast. It felt like such a family and I still talk to them. We have like a group chat on Facebook that we're in and we always are like making sure we're all right, especially now just checking in on each other, sending each other cute memes and videos and stuff. Nice. And it's just, it was such a good show too. It was such a good show. Nice. I wasn't that interested in Kinky Boots before I auditioned for it. Cause I liked the show and the music, but I was like, I don't know why I would be in the show specifically. I got cast and I was like, this is great. That's awesome. This is a great show, great people. This is amazing, um, it was amazing. And did you finish the run? It didn't get cut off? You did the whole- Oh no, we've got, we were able to finish the run. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. March 1st. The very last show is on March 1st. And then in where I live, like in Los Angeles, every started kind of closing down at the very beginning of April, like end of March, beginning of April. Right. So we got to close out the show and do it the way that we wanted to do it. Good. And I just want to say to our people joining us on our very first one, hi, Jolie. Hi to my sister, Courtney. Hi, mom. <laughs> hi, Janie. Um, I'm pretty I'm appreciative that you guys are with us as we're uh, the guinea pig for uh, the first live stream for my channel. Um, yay. So let's see, what else are we going to talk about? So maybe <laughs> talk a little bit about, uh, it's called Discover Me TV, the channel. So tell me any little discoveries maybe that you might be making about yourself, especially maybe in these last few months that is a good kind of self-reflective time maybe. Yeah, I've been, well, one, after having, AMDA was such a fast paced school. Everything was very much like, I was always singing, always dancing, always doing some kind of performance or some kind of class and always just like moving. And I'm just a very quick paced person. Like I done, I like doing, having stuff to do and just not being busy that it makes me like power down and makes me anxious, but I like just having things to do. Right. And then I was in kinky boots. And then immediately after that, everything shut down. And so I was going through this really hard time for like a couple of months. <laughs> Cause I was like, I just got off this really fast treadmill and I just stepped off and nothing was happening. Everything's closed. I can't even really audition for anything. Cause I don't really, all the things on backstage and actors access that I was trying to audition for was like voice work. And I don't have any experience doing voice work. So I couldn't just, even though I think I'd be good at it. I couldn't just say, I hear you. Me. I have no experience. Could be good. I know. Gosh. And then, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I could do voiceover work, but I have no I'm experience. Sure so the people on the other side would be like, she's cool, but she has no experience doing this. <laughs> and I'd be like, that's a valid and a valid thing to say. <laughs> yes, yes, I understand. I think I, do. I, I actually uh, interviewed someone else in that interview, or it'll be edited and hopefully coming out next week. And, uh, yeah, there's there's one guy who had been doing a ton of voiceover work, and he's one of those few actors right now who is working almost the same as he was, and that's just yeah. such a small part of the population. That's great. <laughs> Aww. Yes. Well, I yeah. do believe that you will. I know it's going to be like a re-entry into the professional world after all of this. I think for you, right? <laughs> yeah, especially because I feel like especially since I'm not in college anymore, I'm super out of practice. And I like still sing and I do the Facebook lives and stuff. And I'm thinking about doing a live on my Instagram of, so I can just like sing and keep singing and keep doing things. Yeah. But I feel like it's gonna be such a weird thing when everything opens back up and auditions start happening again and theater start having shows again. Cause I'm gonna be like, I have not sang in like six months. Yeah. <laughs> I have not like performed. Right. Six the month. That is hard. Well, because it's so, I mean, yeah. I know too, it's a part of you. And so it's very hard when the very thing that feels like such a huge part of you is like not able to completely come out. So I think that's really good if you um, just find ways to just sing anyway, sing for love, <laughs> get yeah. it out there. Yeah. Um, me. Also, Jolie, um, is reminding us that there's a new Free the Fish date for um, that musical that you're in, uh, Friday, July 24th at 7 p.m. So that's, I think we've got a little oh, bit longer, a few more weeks before that comes out. So um, okay. So I guess we'll, we'll do a little more promoting about that between now and then. Um, <laughs> So, and uh, I mean, and obviously that's uh, a different experience, right? Rehearsing a musical over Zoom and performing it basically <laughs> like this in boxes. H how yes. has that felt? <laughs> it was very new. I'm very used to, I've, it's something I've never done. Like I record videos of myself singing for like Instagram and 
for self tapes, but even in self tapes, I like have the camera put somewhere and I'm like standing against the wall and I'm like singing and I'm like performing a full thing. But for the video, I was like at my, I'm at my table right now. I'm at my kitchen table and it's like kind of small and the wall is right here. (laughs) And so (laughs) I was like, (laughs) I've never like performed while sitting and just like performing at the camera. And it felt very weird. I think I did pretty good for the fact that one, I've never done it before. And two, for the circumstances of like, we can't actually do this full show. Right. It was a very weird thing to get adjusted to, especially since whenever I perform, I'm so used to either being on the classroom and like performing as all performing with the light, with the audience and like four people rather than just performing for my camera. Yes. But it was still really fun. And everyone in Free the Fish and in Dream at the time was super talented and nice. And so it was still a great experience, even though it was just kind of like a weird thing to get adjusted to. It was still really good. That's good. Well, and actually, you'll probably be a master of self-tapes, which is how, like, so much, I guess, like, Matt and I are, you know, users where we literally physically brought in our re- resumes into rooms when we auditioned more <laughs> more in our earlier days. But now I feel like so much is done like this anyway, so you're probably going to, it's now, now you, you know, you're good at the onstage stuff, but you're going to now be better and better at uh, this, this odd thing where you're performing literally just for your camera at your kitchen table, right? Yeah. That's, I've cool. been getting better. That's what I do. Whenever we do the um, Facebook live things, I always just set it up here or I set it up at my window over here. Yeah. And I'm always just like singing to the camera and I'm always like, okay. It's not as weird now, but I'd still would rather be on stage. I know, I know. It's like you just have to imagine your audience on the other side of that, and it's not easy. Yeah. Um, um, so <laughs> I think, let's see here. Um, yay, and um, <laughs> my mom is saying hi, and Matt is saying hi to us. Um, oh yeah, show us what's behind you. You've got a really pretty, like you've got black lives and trans lives back oh. there. And we went to, uh, me and my roommate went to a protest and somebody gave us oh, their sign cool. because they were going to leave. So they gave us like their poster. Oh, that's so and then cool. We just, it was so nice. There's people leaving the protest. And so they were like, I'm not going to use it because I'm leaving the protest. Do y'all want to sign? Because we had thought about making signs, but then we didn't do it. And we were like, we're going to go anyway. We're still going to go to the protest. But then somebody said, do you want to sign? So we took it. <laughs> It's so neat. It's a really cool one. It is nice. I and he got it. a shirt, matched his shirt, and it was a whole vibe. <laughs> it's very cool. It's a beautiful color scheme and a lovely, lovely message behind you. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, it's it's hard to get used to which side is what. I keep moving to one side and then yeah. like come. I'm starting to get used to this from just my other interviews, but it's weird. Um, yeah. So, so that's a kind of some of your career stuff. So how's, I mean, and you said it was just hard emotionally. How's, um, do you have some things that maybe you can point to, to be like this particular experience or moment has really kind of changed me or it kind of shifted me, um, made me discover something about myself. Like one question I asked somebody recently, which I find uh, is like, what's your favorite failure? Failure. I, I'm wondering, cause we all have those things that we consider are sort of accidents and mistakes in life that many of them end up being sort of a significant new path that ends up being important yeah. to our life. <laughs> I feel like I have at least five, but <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of like a very recent one. This wasn't so much a failure performance wise, but it was a failure in the sense of like, I realized I wasn't taking care of myself. Oh. I was in, yeah, I realized I was still, when I was still in school, I was doing, I was having a lot of opportunities, which was really great. I was in a black box performance it was just like um, kind of a cabaret show and it had a theme and then everything, all of the songs had to match the theme of what the show was. And I also got the opportunity to do, um, Kristen Chenoweth had asked Amda to put together like a group of singers to sing with her at the Hollywood Bowl. And 
and I got asked to do it. And so I got that opportunity and it was amazing. And I was, so, I, I, so I was in a show and I was doing classes and I was doing the Christmas Channel oh thing. God. So I was like singing every day, nonstop. I wasn't sleeping well just because I'm not that, I don't really sleep well usually. Oh. But um, I wasn't sleeping well, I was singing, I was out in class and then I kept having a sore throat and I was like, well, I'm singing a lot, so that's normal. But I didn't do anything to really help it besides drink tea and like try to sleep more because I was like, I'm busy, I can't sleep. Rest is for the week. <laughs> and <laughs> I just kept singing and performing and I was going to my rehearsals and my throat was sore. And I kept getting frustrated with myself because I wasn't singing as well as I usually did. Wow. So I was just like, well, I'm I was gonna sing, which is obviously not a thing you should do. <laughs> and then I went to the doctor because one day I woke up and I could not speak. It like hurt to speak. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to the doctor because something's wrong. He was like, you have tonsillitis. <laughs> and I was oh my like, gosh. you were like, great time. <laughs> and then I got a prescription. Yeah, I was like, you know, this is fine. Luckily, it was after I did the Kristen Chenoweth thing. But I still was in rehearsal for the shows and I still had class and I had tonsillitis. And so he was like, don't sing for two weeks. I'm going to give you a doctor's note because you go to an art school and they're going to try to make you sing. Tell them you can't. Yeah. <laughs> it was, oddly, I was the one that was like trying to make myself sing because I was like thinking in my head, I need to do this. Nice. I need to sing. I need, and all my teachers are like, you have a doctor's note, you have tonsillitis, he gave you medication, don't sing, sit in the corner. More <laughs> respectful of the note than you. <laughs> Honestly, because I'm such a person that's just like, I need to do this, I need to participate, I need to absorb the information, I need to be a part mm -hmm. of what's happening right now. And all my teachers were like, unless it was something that I can like still act out, if I could be on stage and just mouth the words and just act okay. it, then yeah, that was a thing you would have to do. But I wanted to sing. <laughs> I so, okay, okay, feel you. Yeah, it wasn't so much of like a failure because I still was able to do all the things that I like was well, yeah. doing at the time. But I failed myself in not taking care of myself and trying to make myself push. Right. Well, that's the thing is I think oftentimes we do that. Well, and we call ourselves a, a failure of something that has nothing to do with what we're doing, right? It's just your body's like, yeah. up, and then and then your expectations of yourself and your really hard demands end up <laughs> making everything harder on you probably, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm what my daughter just said, I don't know if she's still there, but Clementine, hi Clementine, she's watching <laughs> us. <laughs> Yay. Uh, that's super fun. Um, she was, she's also a singer, she's so awesome, so. And, yeah. uh, Yes, uh, that's so cool. Well, so now it's tricky, of course, to be like, well, what's next? Cause you're like, I don't know, right? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hi Zoe, that's my niece. Hi Zoe. <laughs> She's a singer too. She's awesome. Oh, everybody is. My sister is too. Oh, it's so fun. Aw. Oh we love to sing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, and, and well, and now I kind of asked you, I know, because um, she sang a bunch of really awesome songs and this, so we were all doing this benefit to uh, benefit two things, the SoCal Vocalist Relief Fund, um, um, Jolie, the, yeah, the, the composer of um, Free the Fish, right? We, we got hooked up with that and Matt and I were part of that and Sia was part yeah. of that. And then, and she sang a bunch of songs, which was so fun to hear her. Um, so I didn't know if you were up for singing anything today, but if you want to, you can, but otherwise I know there are ways that you can find more singing, Sia. I can sing. <clears throat> I'm gonna need some of this tea in the corner. Yeah, get the tea, get the tea. I love Girl. that. What did you have? Your mug was very good about taking care of yourself. The last time I remember you saying, look at my cute new mug. What, what did your mug say again? You can't. Said, oh, where is it? Um, it's a little glass mug. And it yeah. says you can't pour from an empty cup. That's and some wisdom. Yeah. It's honestly a very small cup. I thought it was going to be bigger, but it's still very cute. And I still drink from it daily. <laughs> I'm drinking from a bigger one right now just because it's dirty. But... Yes, that's yes, my, yes. my 
a mug. That's, a, wi that's a wise mug you have there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw it on the internet and I said, this is cute. It would do me well. I love it. Mm -hmm. So I, yes. bought it. <laughs> I love it. Well, I have actually, I have some mugs that say, be you and be well. And actually, as Courtney and Zoe and Clementine and I all know very well, our our mom and their grandma um, always says, be happy, be you to us. I actually have my be happy, be you bracelet on right now. It says, and that's like how my mom, Linda, she always finishes like every little card to us or says at the end of any text, she always says, be happy, be you. And I think it, you know, it relates to what you're, you know, it's just always a little bit of a challenge when we're hard on ourselves and asking so much. Yeah. And I feel like performers and singers are the ones that do that the most because everyone else, it's like so easy to, if you don't do well one day or like you're not singing as strong as you usually would, like it's just kind of an off day to be like, I suck. And it's like, you don't suck. You yeah. just like are not doing as good as you usually do today specifically. You're having an off day and that's fine. But it's so hard to like let that message get in your head. I know. Because it's all hard to say when the thing that you're putting out there is you. It's still a piece of you. It's it's yeah. physically in you. And so it's hard to separate out and not let like one bad day be your identity, you know, to all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. That is hard. Well, I'm gonna shut up and let you sing. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can. You froze for me, but you'll come back. Pull it up. I was going to, I forget if I did this song last time. Can you still see me? I can, but you kind of a little choppily freezing for me, but I see you. But maybe it's from a moment ago. <laughs> I'm not sure. All right, now. You're just frozen for me. Yes. Oh, I, I forget you. if I did the same song. Oh, but moving. Um, I on my phone. Am I still frozen? No, you're on my I, phone. I don't remember if I did this on the very on the live stream that we did for free the. Fan. But <clears throat> for me, but here you come, here you come. Okay. I was saying, I don't know if I did this song for the most recent live stream that I did, because I feel like I've done it twice. But I was going to do I Know the Truth from Aida, because that's one of. Oh, I love that. that. I love that song. I think you did it as sort of an encore. Somebody said, Do you know what? You did it because you were saying, there was something to do with your 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 role in Free the Fish, or you an aide, like an intern, and somebody thought you said, you. they wrote like, oh, I think you mean an aide or an intern, and you were like, Aida? And then you are like, I got a song for that, which was so fun. And then that ended up giving us an awesome song. <laughs> because somebody wrote Aida, like, that says Aida. <laughs> which is like the best thing. I was like, I read it. <laughs> I was like, it's a typo. It meant Aida. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's what it, you know, unconsciously <laughs> he, wrote, he meant. Oh, Matt, like, do it again. It's amazing. <laughs> that sounds like an amazing idea. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I'm playing it on my phone. So hopefully it's able to be heard on. Okay. Well, we'll just hope for the best. It's going to be all right. Okay. Let me I'll do a little like. I hear the music. Can you hear that music? Awesome. <laughs> How have I come to this? How did I slip and fall? How did I throw a lifetime away? This should have been my time. It's over, I'll never begin. I've closed my eyes to 
too much for so long And I no longer can I tried to blame it on Some kind of shift in the storm But I know the truth And it haunts me It's for long just posted her interview she just said wow chills i didn't i i, I don't know what <laughs> right then, Jessica, but i was feeling those chills too and matt's amazing see you rock oh it was so oh, oh so fun to hear thank, thank you, you. Huh. <laughs> that oh my gosh oh my that god my that is so favorite fun. show what'd you say i said that's one of my favorite shows aida Oh, that's so awesome. Did you did you see it on Broadway? No. Funny enough, my dad. But I'm old. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I said somewhere online that they were trying to make a revival of it, but it was oh. obviously around the time that was happening, so that probably hasn't happened. But if it did happen and they were trying to make a revival, mm. I'd love to be a part of it. I <laughs> I would love that too. Um, that would be awesome. Oh gosh, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. It just thank you so much. I love that. Ah, oh, it's just so so satisfying. Oh, my mom just wrote beautiful. My sister, simply stunning, so amazing. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, just say thank you. Oh my gosh. Well, I feel that I should probably <laughs> let that sort of wrap it up because I don't think I can do much better than just letting that uh, be the thing that we all leave. <laughs> um, but um, I think hopefully, and maybe, you know, I don't know when, but maybe you could come over someday, someday, and, uh, you know, we'll do an interview in person someday. Um, 
And uh, yeah, but maybe we can do a follow up and do this again sometime. But honestly, everybody, yeah, um, and follow Sia. Um, you know, I'll make sure that you I connect any of you guys uh, through through my accounts. And uh, yeah, because there's other there's other places where you're singing, right? I mean, wherever you can on your yeah. beautiful. Yeah, on Facebook, I have the live streams lift up, and then I have music on Instagram as well. Beautiful. That's amazing. Well, this is one of the most essential things in my mind that we need throughout this hard time. It's just keep singing, keep, keep letting the music play, keep letting it play parts. Um, thank you so much. And I so appreciate you being my little um, lovely, wonderfully talented guinea pig for my first live ever. Thank you for having me. I was like an interview. I know. Oh, but I, I watched her on this other live at like later on, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, wait, stop right now." Okay, I got an idea. <laughs> I'm going to do it right now while I'm thinking about it, because that's those kind of things where you could be like, "Oh, that would be cool," and then all of a sudden, a couple months, I'd be like, "Why didn't I write to see it?" So I did. I wrote right to her. <laughs> I wanted to just be like, "You're amazing. Let's do more." <laughs> so thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy. So now we'll have this up, I believe, as long as I did it right, in two places. It'll hopefully still live on YouTube and live on Facebook. And um, just follow more, Sia. And I am, I'm just so happy to have had you. And, and keep watching anybody here. Also watch my interview with the wonderful Jessica Littlefield, which just went up also. She was my very last in-person one before everything stopped and so i just posted her taped before social distancing and um so anyway lots of amazing talent and i love discovering anybody that touches my heart <laughs> oh maybe just one last thing to send us off with do you have an artist or an author or a musician or somebody that you just love that you think maybe not everybody knows about that we should discover i mean there are probably many but Um, I recently just started listening to Emily King, and she's a great artist. Great. Yeah, she'd write. yeah she's a singer. Emily King. She has, like, short black hair, and she's this lady, and she's very tall and slender. Great. Yeah. Also, Rebecca Sugar, who did Steven Universe, because that's my favorite cartoon, and it's so good. <laughs> wait, my kids love, wait, Steven Universe? Is that what you just said? Yes, I love Steven Universe. We love it in our house too. Wait, and who was the person yeah. who just said from Steven Universe? Um, Rebecca Sugar. She's the one who created Steven Universe. And also oh. Emily King sang on her um one of the for the newer season Steven Universe features, she sang a song for one of the episodes. So it's all links together. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Wait. So I don't know if I just spelled that right, but I just put that in the I just put that in the comments too. Rebecca Sugar. That's the best name. And yeah, and Jolie it's sugar, telling it's us sugar. Thomas Blakely. Yes. So Jolie, Jolie Zucker, and Elizabeth. What's her last name again? Who wrote Free the Fish? Help me, Jolie or Sia. Yeah. Um, but anyway. I Maybe write mm. that for us, Jolie. Um, but yeah, do well, well, I'm going to keep it coming on my social media when Free the Fish is coming up on the Hollywood um, Fringe Festival. And because it's yeah. an incredibly um, very relevant also story, right? To right now, to see it. Yes. It's very relevant. <laughs> yeah. Frightening. It's incredibly relevant. More than even Jolie realized, maybe. Or... <laughs> Yeah, like it became more relevant as time went on. <laughs> it was relevant already and then things were happening and I was like, okay, this is super relevant. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's coming at the right time. Elizabeth Everhard, thank yeah. you. So these, the, yes, these are the ones who wrote Free the Fish and then, um, oh, and Thomas and Duncan, who are, wait, these are the ones who wrote Dream at the End of Time, yes? Am I right? Am I lying? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Are obsessed with Steven Universe, says Jolie. <laughs> Yay! 
And Jolie said we <laughs> foreshadowed in a way that she didn't think was possible. That is true. So sometimes I guess you have a you have a way that you didn't even realize going in, right? To tell a story that you didn't even know the full mm -hmm. story. Yeah. Well, so that's yeah. looking for yeah. everybody here to to make sure to follow too, because that's important. And 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 then Matt has done his very best to edit it in such a way that you can enjoy all these phenomenal performers the best possible, you know, the best that it's possible to do. Yeah. Everything brought in separately. And uh I think um and if anyone can do it, Matt Toronto can. So <laughs> I believe yeah. it, sweetheart. It like the stage and, stuff, and I was like, this is something I wouldn't have thought about. <laughs> yeah. But I guess you need to think about it online <laughs> or on yes. um a camera. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, and Matt, you know, uh many of the people who know and love me who are here today uh wrote this uh movie face to face, face the number two face, and that was on Netflix yeah. uh, for two years up until. And it was literally, also foreshadowing, it was literally every shot was like this, like uh, was done through a FaceTime uh, conversation. And mm -hmm. now it's the only way we all talk. So, so uh, his movie has become yep. rather relevant again too. So pretty, pretty, pretty cool. So, um, yeah. Thank you so, so much. And I'm gonna get off because I know that my son has got to get on a Zoom call at two and I wanna make sure that his Wi-Fi is okay. Um, <laughs> but you're a gem, thank you so much for doing this. <laughs> and I gotta share, I'm gonna be this gotta share, the, share the screen time. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, well, it's such a delight. Thank you so much. I was right to have you on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you said this was a good idea. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so anyway, thank you. Thank you. Any little eyes that are on us right now. I see those little eyes. Thank you so much. Yeah. You guys are so awesome. See ya. I can't wait to meet you in the flesh someday. And um, we'll just yeah, keep the love um, to anything being created here between the two of us. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Thank you again. And I guess we're going to sign off for now. Um, yay. So everybody, so wait, mm -hmm. I'm just saying one last time. See ya, Arminger, everybody. Woo! I wish I had a whole audience to clap for you, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, nice to see you. Thank and you. We'll talk again sometime. <laughs> All right. And we'll maybe yeah, definitely better sometime, too. Yes, I'd be totally down for that. I would be down for that too. That would be awesome. So, all right, we're going to end this for now and we appreciate everybody. <laughs> Thank you. See you all later. Oh, and you know, I guess uh, this is going to live on Discover Me TV. Thank you everybody for watching Discover Me TV and I will see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs> Yay.